Okay, today uh, we're going to learn how to work the Q-switch NDYAG laser. And uh, the first, uh, we're going to do it in the context of cleaning, the, uh, uh, in the context of treating solar lentigines. So the first step is to clean the patient's hands because often they have cover-up. And we did that before and you can see there's no uh, makeup or anything on the alcohol swab. Uh, the next step is to make sure that everyone's eyes are protected in the room. Um, so, uh, you know, we do that by uh, having these goggles. And you can see that the wavelength in this case, wait one second, we've got to focus in there, is 1064 and 532. So those are the wavelengths of the Q-switch NDX. So these are the appropriate goggles. The patient has these uh, uh, eye shields here. Uh, doing two is excessive, but uh, they can either wear the glasses or wear these uh, laser eye shields, which are uh, here disposable laser eye shields. We want to make sure that we know where the fire extinguisher is outside, so that that's and the door is closed. Uh, door is closed, so the laser beams uh, light don't doesn't escape outside to unprotected eyes. And the fire extinguisher is to the left outside there. Okay, so clean the plastic tip of the laser with alcohol. Okay, so here we have, you'll find the, the laser with the tip inside, so you just remove the tip. And you can uh, clean it with alcohol or with um, a Santa wipe, uh, which is more disinfectant, but typically this tip doesn't uh, touch the patient, so it's, it's not the most important thing. Okay? Find the laser with the key turned, the dot outside the circle. Okay, so we see that the, the key is turned with the dot outside the circle, that's right. If the laser has been turned off via the power switch at the back of the console, turn that switch to the on position so, first. So let's just go to the back of the console. Which is the, now this is on wheels here, so I'm just going to zoom out. This is on wheels. So we can wheel the, wheel the thing uh, out to us. I, they, I don't know if they're locked or there's, there's locks on the wheels here, so you've got to undo those. They're all locked, so we're unlocking all the wheels. Look, this is a practical. This is a practical thing of using a laser. Careful for that. Okay. So now, and here's the foot pedal of, of the laser, by the way. And we're just going to get move that out into a place where we can easily step on it. Okay. So here's the back of the console. So what were you saying again? If the laser has been turned off via the power switch at the back of the console, turn that switch to the on position first. Okay. So now this. I'm just going to get a chance to focus here. Uh, it's on the on position. Up is on. Turn on the laser by turning the key at the front of the machine clockwise to the circle with the dot inside. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. Excuse me. Just spell that. Okay. So turn it on, circle with the dot inside. If the power does not turn on, make sure the machine is plugged in. If the is, power. Is it plugged in? Where's the plug? Uh, it is. It is plugged in. We really expected the machine to turn on now, and it just didn't. So troubleshooting exercise number one. If the power still does not turn on, pull out the red knob, keeping the key turned to the circle with the dot inside. The red knob is actually an emergency stop. Aha! It should always be pulled out. Wow, that was real fortuitous. We did not plan that. Okay. If if the machine, say, catches fire, you push in the red knob. If you use the red knob to turn off the machine instead of using the key, then the machine will not turn on until the red knob is pulled out again. Okay. okay. Great. Choose the desired spot size using the dial on the handpiece. Hold on, the dial on the handpiece. So what did it, don't press anything. No, okay. Did you press anything? No, no, it's fine. Nothing got pressed no, there? It's, it's in its original... Um, it's in the original settings from... Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, fine. So change. Spot size on here. The size of the dot is directly proportional to the diameter. Two, four, six. Okay. So hold on. Let me just let it focus here because it takes a second to focus in. Okay. Choose the wavelength using the dial above the spot size dial on the handpiece. It's a green and red bar. Okay. There are two purple buttons at the front of the machine. Okay. One is labeled selection and the other is labeled emission ready. 
So one is like select adjust and emission ready. Okay. The selection button is used to select all appropriate settings. To move from one parameter to another, this button is pressed once. Okay, you hold it. You see the go ahead, press it, and you can see the arrow moving. Go again. Arrow moving again. Arrow moving. Okay. Then it may be turned to adjust each setting appropriately. Okay, so now he's turning it to the right, and you see it's increasing the fluences, or to the left, and it's decreasing the fluences. Okay. The arrowhead will indicate which parameter is being adjusted. Right. It starts at fluence, goes to frequency, then goes to spot size, and then back to fluence. Okay. Note, the spot size can be adjusted either on the handpiece or via the selection button dial. Okay. Input all desired settings, wavelength, spot size, fluence, and pulse frequency. Okay. Adjust the direction of the handpiece using the swivel points on the connecting arm. Hold on. Okay, so yeah, I'm just, let, me, let, me, let me just um, pan out there so you can see that. Okay, go ahead. If the elbow is bent too much, it bends a cable internally, resulting in an error message on the display. Okay. If what elbow? If the... Of that one. Okay. Fine. You, you can keep the handpiece attached to the arm or disconnect it. So hold on. So the, I'm, I'm, Yeah, you see, this is the handpiece, and this blue thing is the arm, right? Now, but don't, don't disconnect it, because I'm going to show you how to disconnect it. If you choose to keep the handpiece attached to the laser, adjust the distance the handpiece is from the target lesion using the track at the top lateral aspect of the handpiece. So you see there's this track, no, no, go, go up there, that, that track, yeah. So that can, uh, that you can, you can, that slides back and forth, do you know how to make it slide back and forth? How does it? How'd you do that? You just you push it down and lock, unlock. Okay. See now you can have you so can you adjust. Lock, okay. And then you press down and it unlocks. So Fine. All right. If you choose to disconnect the handpiece, press the metal release button at the top of okay, the well, laser. Okay, I gotta focus in on that one right so here. we can see kind of exactly where we are there. Okay. The handpiece will fall suddenly upon release, so you must wow. grasp the arm firmly with your other hand. If you are a righty, hold the handpiece in your right hand and press the metal release button with your left hand. The handpiece is attached to the arm by a wire. Say the handpiece. The handpiece hand piece is attached to an arm by a wire that catches if you move away from the laser too fast. So avoid sudden motions with the handpiece. Hold the distal end of the handpiece with your left hand and either guide the posterior end of the handpiece with your right hand or rest the distal end on your right shoulder. Position the foot pedal so you can press it comfortably. Now obviously, you know, if we're touching the foot pedal with our glove, you know, we're going to change the glove, you know. But for the sake, so, so we actually need to just change the glove so you'll get him an extra one. Okay, go ahead, continue. Carry on. Press the emission ready get, button. Get him the glove while you're reading. The screen changes from ready to emission. A yellow light goes on just okay. above the screen. Okay, wait, so... Okay, so now you're from ready to emission. Right, okay. Be careful. The light that flashes works. on the handpiece at the spot size dial, and the laser makes a noise. So... So, here, oh, yeah, okay, so we're just uh, pausing to change gloves. Now, um, did we decide what settings actually to, yeah, well, to use for, for this one? So do you didn't decide, but I, I think that's what we should use. So, so, so basically, uh, okay, so uh, the, the, there, there's rationales that I explain in the um, accompanying, uh, you know, a written manual to this video um, on, how to, on the logic of how to choose which spot size, so uh, I mean uh, which settings. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've chosen the settings that we want to start at initially. So where are we at? Allow the handpiece to warm up for a minute or so by running in this mode prior to initiating treatment. Fine. So we did this. So we're pressing the ready emission, and it's going to take like a minute for the handpiece to warm up. What's? You see the light. Uh, yeah, it's light. Look at the lights flashing there. Okay. Fine. Okay. So that's it. Um, are we? Uh, Hold the tip such that 
the most distal aspect of the plastic tip touches the patient's skin. Holding it much further than a millimeter from the target will decrease the efficacy of the laser. And, and uh, no, we're not stepping on any petals, so nothing's uh, emitting just yet. Okay. The handpiece should be held perpendicular to the target lesion. The handpiece is perpendicular to the target lesion. Okay, so I'm just going to just, you see how it's perpendicular. Okay. And, uh, okay, so, um, so j just, uh, we've we got to throw these on here, and, um, all right, now, um, okay, so stepping, uh, I just want to make sure I'm filming this while, while reading properly, okay, so stepping on the foot pedal will discharge the laser, uh, holding the pedal down will result in pulse emission at the set frequency, releasing the foot pedal stops pulse emission. So experienced, yikes, experienced users who are comfortable with high pulse emission rate uh, can guide the tip along a target without pulse stacking at high emission rates. So, you know, if you press down on the pedal, it's going to go pop, 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 and you have to, like, slowly move it along. Or you can just step on the pedal and it can go pop once, and then uh, you, so you can do single ones or multiple ones. And by by setting um, just by setting the hertz to a lower hertz, uh, you can also um, it's just going to go very slowly pop 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 versus pop 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 pop. Um, all right. So uh, after the full pulse is fired, look for a uh, look for a fine white crust to replace the pigment of the lesion. This is the desired endpoint. Too exuberant a crust pinpoint bleeding or tissue splattering warrants a decrease in fluence. So we're going to go ahead and do like, a, I got to focus in on here. Uh, we're going to do a couple of, we're going to do a couple of lesions here just to. Where do you want to go? Now I always find, by the way, you, when, when skin is uh, friable, uh, I, I like, or when skin is all mushed up like mm -hmm. this, I like to, you know, spread out, splay mm -hmm. the skin. That's also with laser hair removal as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and, and then you go ahead and, and, and do a spot. So we're just going to do. And you see how it's like, okay, so here's the, here's the, um, wait one second, it's got to focus. Very blurry. Okay, focus. Here we go. So it's a, it's a fine white crust. There's no purpura. And you heard the many clicks that, blah, 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 blah. that means that it was firing a whole bunch of times at, at once. So I want to try to do it at a lower hertz. Set it to like one, just so you can hear the difference in clicks. So he had to set the he had to press the emission ready, then adjust, then repress the emission ready. Okay, so wait one second. Uh, let me just pan out again. Okay, and go ahead. You see how it's going slower, but but okay, that's enough. And um, okay, so let me just continue reading here. More commonly, uh, more commonly, because uh, it is a good it is a good start. It's good to start conservatively, conservatively with a low fluence. The fluence may need to be increased until cavitation, meaning this white crust, is achieved. Uh, when finished, so so let's pretend that we, uh, you know, did the whole lesion. Because we're not going to do the whole lesion, the whole treatment on tape. But uh, let's pretend that we finished. So when finished, press the emission ready button, which prevents inadvertent discharge. Okay, so we just did that. Uh, replace the handpiece to the laser arm by pressing the metal clip male uh, uh, of the handpiece into the hole female of the laser arm. And so we're struggling with that, but uh, we got it. You, it, sh it should click into place. Yep. Did it click? Yep. Okay, I didn't hear that. Okay, check to see it holds prior to releasing your hands completely from the piece. Wait one second, so do that again. Yes, yeah, see it's, it's holding, we're good. Um, Clean the, because otherwise you get fired if, if you break the laser. Um, clean the plastic nose tip with alcohol again. So, that, you know, we're going to repeat the cleaning of the tip. Uh, and then, so, we'll, okay, so we could just, we'll do that after. Um, turn the key to the off position. Go ahead, turn it. Turn the key to the off position with the circle with dot outside. If the laser does not turn off, you can push the red knob uh, or turn the switch at the back of the machine off like we did in the beginning. Uh, if you are done using the laser at the end of the day, turn the key to the off position, but also switch the switch at the back of the machine 
at the back of the machine to the off position. And then in terms of uh, machine maintenance, um, uh, there, there's coolant that's uh, part of this machine, um, and uh, there's filters that need to be changed every six months. Uh, you have to calibrate the laser periodically, uh, and there's a special way to um, do that. And then, uh, you know, you want to change the plastic end piece. There's a, this protective window. You want to change that yearly. So now I think we're done.